ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Before we get started with the program, I would just like to take a moment and uh, thank our good friend and very talented local artist, Mr. Johnny Lawrence, for providing today's music. Thank you, Johnny. Good morning, everyone. My name is Jason Clark, and it will be my privilege and pleasure to be the master of ceremony for today's event. I would like to welcome everyone on behalf of the Department of Athletics to the Wayne State University Athletic Hall of Fame celebration. Today is our 43rd induction class. Today's event is an opportunity to showcase the very best of Wayne State Athletics, and it gives us great pleasure to have you all share in this very special occasion, especially all the friends and family who were able to travel down and former teammates and be with the inductees today. You should know that the Department of Athletics is close to ending our 100th anniversary, the centennial celebration of, of champions, and the department would like to take this opportunity to thank everyone who participated in the various events this year. The centennial celebration will conclude at the upcoming W Day event in April, Details of W Day are in your Warrior Within magazine that is at each table. As we begin today's event, I would like to take a moment and welcome and introduce our special guests and our class of 2018 inductees. I would like to first welcome and introduce members of the University Administration who have joined us for today's induction ceremonies. They include Ms. Sandra Hughes O'Brien, Chair of the Wayne State University Board of Governors, and her daughter, Fiona. Dr. M. Roy Wilson, President, Wayne State University. And the First Lady and Director of the Wayne State High Program, Ms. Jacqueline Wilson. The HIGH program, for those of you who don't know, is a program that helps financially stressed students at Wayne State University reach their goal to graduate. So thank you very much. We welcome each of you, and we thank you for joining us in today's ceremony. And now I would like to introduce the Hall of Fame inductees. I will ask each inductee to stand briefly as I call your name. Ms. Allison Allen Ortega, softball. Miss Catherine Likes, swimming. Mr. Joe Long, football. Mr. Josh Rennell, football. Mr. Andre Surrey, swimming. and Mr. S. Gary Spicer, Senior Contributor. We congratulate and salute each of you, our newest inductees into the Wayne State University Athletics Hall of Fame. You guys are probably wondering how you were selected, and let me tell you how the selection committee, the Hall of Fame Board of Directors. Uh, the candidates sit down and the, uh, selecting the candidates is a difficult, demanding, and time-consuming task. And we thank the Hall of Fame Board of Directors for their time, their expertise, and their long memories of Wayne State Athletics. I would like to introduce each of them to you now. Uh, please ho hold your applause until all are standing. Mr. Rob Fournier, Chair and WSU Director of Athletics. Mr. Dr. Paul Andrews, Hall of Fame inductee, class of 1993. Ms. Teresa Aris, WSU Athletics Chief of Staff. Mr. Mike Horn, Hall of Fame inductee, class of 2001. Mr. Bob Jackson, Hall of Fame inductee, class of 2005. Ms. Karen Lafada, Assistant Women's Basketball Coach. Mr. Ian Larkin, former WSU Basketball Letter winner. Mr. Angus McKenzie, former WSU Letter winner and coach. Mr. Mitch Ritter, Hall of Fame inductee, class of 2010. 
Mr. Jeff Weiss, Senior Associate Athletic Director, and Ellie Molesky and Sean Winkleseth, our student athlete representatives. Ladies and gentlemen, the Hall of Fame Board of Directors. Here to provide a brief welcome, first on behalf of the current student athletes, a representative of the football program, Mr. Deontay Nicholas. Deontay is the Wayne State Student Athlete Advisory Committee President and the GLIAC SAC representative to the National Committee. How are you guys doing today? Um, my name is Deontay Nicholas. Like he said, um, I represent the football team and I'm National SAC representative for the GLIAC. Uh, in December, I will graduate with a bachelor's degree in broadcast journalism. And on behalf of the student athlete um, in the athletic department and my fellow student athletes, we congratulate the Hall of Fame class 2018. Sir so Isaac Newton once said, if I have seen further than others, it is by standing upon the shoulder of giants. As student athletes, we are thankful to have the opportunity to stand on the foundations that you have all built for us here at Wayne State. You have all helped create the, the championship experience that we now get to enjoy. And because of that, we are grateful to each one of you. Each time we walk past that Hall of Fame area in the Math Eye Center, we are motivated to achieve more and be more. For me personally, I've been a fan of Josh Rennell before I even came to Wayne State and still continue to this day. Hearing the achievements of this awesome group pushes me and my fellow student athletes to be the best repre representation of Wayne State Athletics that we can be. So congratulations to the Hall of Fame class of 2018. I think you want your broadcasting job, Josh, so. <laughs> Next to provide remarks, now in his fifth year leading the university, is the 12th president of Wayne State University, Dr. M. Roy Wilson. Additionally, President Wilson is one of 16 members of the NCAA President's Council, who's charged with setting the strategic direction for the division. And finally, please know that Wayne State is currently celebrating its sesquicentennial commemorating 150 years of academic and research excellence in Detroit. To that, the university invites you to share your Wayne State memories by uploading an audio or video file or via social media at hashtag MyWSUStory. Thank you. Well, good morning, everyone. This is really always one of my very, very special days that I just enjoy so much. Um, the chair of uh, our board was introduced, Sandra Hughes O'Brien, always nice to have her here, but what was not introduced and is very special is her daughter, who is a star pom-pom person, who is also, I think we have four years to try to get her here as a warrior. So, people wel welcome. So we're here to celebrate our newest inductees, and, and you know, one of the things I just want to mention is certainly the, the athletic prowess that you demonstrated is the main reason why, why you're here, but I also know that it was very, you're a Wayne State graduate, and that means that you also had to do a lot academically in order to uh, finish and um, juggle both the athleticism with the, uh, the rigors of of getting a degree, so congratulations. And in the, uh, you're all just great role models, as Deontay was saying, to, the, to our current um, student athletes. Our current student athletes, I can't say enough about them. I just to give you an example of our accomplishments of, of uh, uh, this year. For fall 2017, 74% of all Wayne State student athletes had a 3.0 or better GPA. The same sem semester, a school record of 32 student athletes earned a 4.0 GPA. We had a school record of 186 student athletes earn academic all GLIAC honors last school year. And all 17 athletic teams have a cumulative GPA of at least 3.05 with an overall student athletic cumulative GPA of 3.30. And our student athletes have completed that's all very good. And our student athletes have completed 60,630 community service hours over the past six years 
including 10,136 hours last year. And you just heard from Deontay Nicholas, who uh, represented not only Wayne State, but also the entire GLIAC member schools and all Division II student athletes at last month's NCAA convention. Now, to the um, student athletes, let me just say this. Well, before I even talk about the student athletes, there's one of you who I just have to point out because my comments will seem like uh, it's not directed to him, but Gary Spicer is going, to be, um, is going to be inducted today, and he's just an example of someone who uh, continues uh, to give and give and give and have a positive impact on this community and, and on society. And I just wanted to just single that out because the rest of my comments are to the student athletes, uh, both the uh, student athletes who are, are being honored today, but also ones who are just uh, coming up and um, looking upon our honorees as, as role models. You know, I, I was doing something this morning that I always try to do on Saturday mornings, which is read the New York Times. And there was a, a article that caught my attention. And I'm not a very political person, so don't take this in a political way, but there's a message here. And, and the article had to do with the fight between Laura Ingram and LeBron James. It's for those of you who may not know, Laura Ingram is a, is a Fox commentator who um, says some negative things about LeBron, mainly because LeBron had criticized the president, President Trump, who had criticized some other people. But, uh, <laughs> But the, uh, but the comment that she made was thought by, by some to be, um, well, certainly was, was uh, 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 potentially racist, um, but um, uh, was uh, inappropriate by all counts. And one of the comments she made was that he needs to shut up and just dribble. Um, and, and I was thinking about that comment and thinking about our student athletes and the Wayne State degree that they receive, and to the honorees who already received a Wayne State degree. And whatever our student athletes, however way you were defined in the past, certainly in high school and maybe before, you know, you're no longer defined solely by your athleticism, solely by your exquisite hand-eye coordination, by your tremendous physical uh, stamina and um, your, your physical strength, but you're also defined as someone who is an educated citizen of this world with a, with a, high, with a, um, a four year degree from Wayne State University. And that makes you a very, very special person because you already have such great talents as demonstrated by the fact that you're being honored today and you, as, was, as I mentioned with all the the academic and community service hours that our student athletes go through. So our student athletes are very, very special. And then receiving a degree from here also is very, very special. So I, I, the, the point of this is that I think that you have an obligation as very special people to continue to do what is necessary to make the world a better place. And I just ask all of you to not just be athletes and not just define yourself by your physical, um, ex ex by your excelling physically, but also by what you can do to continue to make this a, a positive world. So thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Wilson, for those words. Now let us take a moment to remember a Hall of Fame member and former student athlete, coaches, and staff who passed away since our last induction. From the Hall of Fame class of 2000, former baseball and men's basketball letter winner, Mr. Bob Kloss. And let us also remember these former student athletes. Reno Mustanen, swimming, 1936-37. Tom Bomberski, football, 1968 to 70. Vic Varik, football, 1974 to 76. Mela McGee, women's basketball, 1975 to 77. And Dave Zemanski, football, 
1975 to 77. Let us now observe a moment of silence in their honor. Before we begin today's program, uh, we are pleased to welcome and once again honor those previous Hall of Fame members who are with us today. I would ask them to stand as I call their name, and again, we'll hold our applause until all are standing. Dr. John Telford from the class of 1978, Dr. Paul Andrews, class of 1993, Mr. Angelo Gust, class of 1994, Ms. Pat Kent, class of 1995, Ms. Yanina Parrott Jacobs, class of 2000, Mr. Mike Horn, class of 2001, Mr. Brian Morrow, class of 2003, Mr. Bob Jackson, class of 2005, Mr. Mitch Ritter, class of 2010, Ms. Natalia Natashak, class of 2011, Mr. Frank Jenny, class of 2011, and Mr. Mike Wiseman, class of 2017. Thank you for your appearance today. Our first speaker this afternoon is the chair of the Wayne State University Board of Governors, ladies and gentlemen, Ms. Sandra Hughes O'Brien. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me here today. Um, I, some of you who know me know that I am a sports junkie. Uh, I, when I joined the Board of Governors in 2013, um, I, it's safe to say that I am probably the biggest sports fan on the governing board. And um, I have grew up in a household where sports and athletics was an important part of life. And so it's, for me, it's always been one of those things that's just a normal part of growing up. Uh, I loved my, I still love to this day my father's sports teams. You know, the Lions, God help me. but. The Tigers and the Lions were my dad's team and the Pistons, right? Those are the teams of your father end up being your teams too. And um, one of the other great things I loved about sports growing up was that it was a great unifier of all people. And that's one of the greatest things I loved about um, athletics and, uh, and sports in general is the camaraderie you feel with all kind of different people that might not have grown up in your neighborhood, but when you're all cheering for the same team, you're all, it's, it's this unification that I, that I love and I, and I really appreciate that about uh, the aspect of sports. So a lot of you will know, if you follow me on um, Instagram uh, or the president on Instagram, I, I kind of have this um, friendly competition, I'll say, with Dr. Wilson. And, um, I think you're winning. <laughs> and, and so every time we're at an event together, I'll, I'll you know, kind of nudge him and say, I already got it up. You know, I already got my, my shot. I take my picture, I put my note on, and it's already out, it posted on Instagram. So it's a little, it's a little competition he and I have uh, with each other, but it, both because we're lovers of sports. And um, if you know me, you know anytime I have an opportunity to brag on our athletes, I am doing it. And so today, it gives me great pleasure to um, just mention a few things that went on last year. We had a very, very good year last year. And uh, I've always said, um, come hell or high water, we're going to get these warriors on ESPN, um, uh, any sports programming show, ESPN Sports Center, you know, we're there. We got to get our names in there. So this year was a really, this past year was a very good year for us because we had at least on three occasions national coverage of our athletics department. And uh, initially, the first was in April of last year when we opened Ernie Harwell Field. Uh, with the help of one of our inductees today, Mr. Gary Spicer. And that, that gave us a lot of national coverage, which was wonderful in the media. Uh, the next was when the athletic department unveiled our uniforms for the year, celebrating the athletic division's 100th birthday celebration when we unveiled the Congressional Medal of Honor uniforms. And that was on Sports Center, ESPN, it was, it was everywhere. And I was like, I was tweeting, I was Instagram, Facebook, you name it, I was hitting all of them, making sure everybody knew those were our, those were our girls, those were our boys. It was awesome. The, the next was that the USA Today recognized uh, our, our uh, football jerseys, which were our alternate jerseys, the, um, the um, Congressional Medal of Honor jerseys, um, 
nominated them as the top alternate jerseys in, in college football. And um, for division, and, and it was the only Division II school to be named with that recognition, so I thought that was pretty damn good. Um, the other thing, uh, other couple uh, notable things were that our, our softball head coach, Gary Bryce, became an uh, all-time winningest coach of NCAA Division II. We broke ground on our, uh, which will be our new athletic performance center, which should be, I'm told, opening in the springtime in April, which will be wonderful. And it'll be a wonderful uh, 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 area for our athletes to train uh, and obviously a good recruiting tool as well. Um, we also, uh, the athletic division, as I mentioned before, launched its 100th year anniversary. Uh, the university this year is turning 150 years, but our athletic program is winding down its 100th birthday celebration of champions, which has been a, a wonderful success. We also, with the help of a lot of our benefactors and supporters and boosters, uh, were able to um, raise over $1.4 million for the athletic department for the fourth consecutive year, which we've raised over a million dollars, uh, bringing our 17-year total to $18,286,000 for the athletic de uh, department. Lastly, I, uh, we wouldn't, you know, we're, we're student athletes uh, after all, and um, the student part of student athletes is the last thing I'll, I'll leave you with, um, which is one of our biggest bragging points, and that is that we have a student athlete graduation rate of 83%, um, and these are numbers that are reported federally to the government because they're required to do so. 83% graduation rate of our student athletes, and um, I think that is a, a wonderful testament. It's a wonderful testament to our athletic division uh, and all our coaches, uh, all our support staff, associate coaches, assistant coaches, everyone, top to bottom, uh, that helps surround each and every one of these student athletes with support from the minute they walk on here to the time they walk across the stage and get their diploma. Uh, I want to also, lastly, um, congratulate each and every one of the new inductees. Know that the governing board here is very, very supportive of you. We honor you, we're very proud of you, and we hope that we make you proud too. Have a great day, thank you. Thank you, Governor O'Brien. With us this afternoon to give remarks in his 18th year as Director of Athletics, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Rob Fournier. Thanks, Jason. Uh, on behalf of the entire athletic department, I want to welcome all of you to our 43rd Hall of Fame induction ceremony and certainly a special congratulations to our inductees. And I want to thank the uh, President and uh, First Lady Jacqueline and certainly uh, Governor O'Brien to come out to this. I can remember when you wouldn't find a President or a Chair of the Board uh, not only coming, not coming to a Hall of Fame, but wouldn't even come to an athletic event. So I think that really underscores uh, just how much they appreciate what uh, you all are doing. You know, I knew this class was going to be special even before we had selected it because, as was mentioned, this was going to be 100 years of athletics. And you think about it, all the things that have happened in that 100 years. Going back to 1917 when David L. Holmes walked over in that October evening to a student council class and laid out some cloths of paper so they could pick out the new school colors. I guess they would call that a marketing focusing group now. And that first basketball game in 1918, so much has changed, or has it? Do you know in 1918, the president of the United States was Woodrow Wilson. A hundred years later, the president of Wayne State University is M. Roy Wilson. <laughs> and Woodrow Wilson had been a former president of Princeton, and that's an Ivy League school, and President Wilson graduated from another Ivy League school, Harvard. 
the Vice President of the United States in 1918 was a former Senator from Indiana, Thomas Marshall. And today, the Vice President of the United States is Mike Pence, the former Governor of Indiana. Back in 1918, right over there on Grand River, Willie Durant, the head of General Motors, was trying to put together a fleet of different types of cars that would generate enormous income for General Motors. He picked up a small little firm. It was called Chevrolet. And in 1918, if you can believe it, the women's suffrage movement was at its zenith as women were trying to get the right to vote. And as they protest for the 19th Amendment to be passed, here we are 100 years later where we see unequal treatment of women, unfairness, and in some cases, criminal behavior, which has led to the Me Too and the Time's Up movement. And 100 years ago, in a small little town in Washington, Georgia, a baby boy was born. Her parents christened him William Ernest Harwell. A hundred years later, almost to the day that we played our first game, Michigan knows them all today as Ernie. Maybe a lot hasn't changed. I know one thing, the foundations that Dean McKenzie and David L. Holmes laid out a hundred years ago, they're present still today. And you'll see it in these six inductees. A hundred years. Went by fast. You know, it's said that uh, people who don't have knowledge of their past is like a tree without roots. And when I look over the inductees today and what they've done, I see those same simple values of 100 years ago. I actually ask myself, how in the hell did they make it 100 years? Think about it. They never had a home football field until the 50s. The basketball team never had a facility to play in until the math I was opened in 1967. Do you think they would have done that in Ann Arbor or East Lansing? You know, the funny thing about the football field, originally it was played over at Goldberg Field over at St. Antoine and then in Hamtramck at the old Keyword Stadium. It wasn't until the 50s that they put in Tartar Field across Interstate 94, which was basically a high school field. And when they built the facility in 1967 and they played their first game, well, the locker room remained exactly the same until 2004, which means no air conditioning. Think about those working conditions. Do you remember the crown in the middle of the field? That was irrigation. Even Burger King thought it was big. And in fact, when we got done and put the new field turf in, they found out it wasn't even a regulation field. We're not going to adjust the records. The pool was in the basement of Mackenzie Hall, but it wasn't a regulation pool. For some reason, they put in a pool that was shorter. They could never have a meet. They could never have an effective practice. I'm asking myself, does anybody got a tape measure at this school? <laughs> but through all of that, they survived. Think about that. The first 50 years of athletic existence, no facilities on campus. And then think about some of the other golden moments. Wayne State was an original member of the Mid-American Conference in 1947. Actually, we won the golf championship. And the next year, the president decided to take us out of the Mid-American Conference because it wasn't strong enough academically. Take that, Western Michigan. We'll show you up, University of Toledo. Then there was the president who said, you know what, let's just have a great big intramural activity. No varsity sports. The only problem was there were no fields. That was a neighborhood over there. And then, of course, as some of my friends sitting over on these nearby tables will tell me, there was the time when the head of the university went to the board to eliminate football, and they voted unanimously against that recommendation, 
But he did the next best thing in his power. He squeezed off the funding. And they survived. And I figured out why. I figured out why they made it 100 years. People, just like anything in life, good people can overcome bad things. You see that in our student athletes, the people that are inducted into the Hall of Fame, the generosity of Gary Spicer. People that did a little bit more than what was their expectation. People who didn't let adversity stand in their way of being a success. That's why I feel really good about the next 100 years, because Wayne State has those kind of people, not just in their past, but the past will be the roots to create that future. Congratulations. Welcome home.